from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The Johannesburg Property Company invited media in June to view some of its property initiatives around the city, which includes the refurbishment of two heritage sites. David Oliveira tells us more. On the first stop of the tour, media were allowed to enter the iconic post office on Rissick Street. Engineering News caught up with the lead architect on the project, Paradigm Architects, James Wiley. It was built in 1897, so it's over 100 years old and uh, was always uh, built, uh, designed as a, as a post office and was functioning as a post office until the 90s, the early 90s, uh, at which point it closed as a post office and pretty much was boarded up uh, and abandoned. And um, unfortunately, a couple of fires, the most disastrous one in 2009, did an awful amount of damage to the building. Uh, so where we're at now is uh, we are looking to do uh, some restoration, renovation to the building and to completely change its function. Uh, so we're looking uh, essentially at an interim phase, uh, which is to use it for an event space and exhibitions and all sorts of things. And with an eye that uh, we currently don't know what the final use of the building is, but we've built in a lot of flexibility so that uh, we can go in any sort of direction that we need to. Currently, uh, we've just finished um, doing a lot of uh, steel work in the building, a, a structural steel frame and some uh, concrete work in the basement. Uh, that has actually just finished, so we're looking at uh, uh, the next phase is a couple of months uh, in terms of some refurbishment to the building in order to close up the, um, uh, the box gutter uh, at the back, which is currently leaking, some work to the, to the, uh, to the roof over the main postal hall, uh, to put a temporary cap on the clock tower to stop uh, water getting in when time it rains, and to, do, uh, to close up the, the, the windows and doors on the external. Uh, so that's essentially uh, the idea was, and it's very important to me, to close the building to the elements uh, to prevent any further damage uh, and destruction to the building. So that we're looking at, uh, that's starting now, it's already started, and that'll take uh, the next, say, four or five months, I would imagine, uh, at which point then, you know, hopefully we've sorted out what the next phase of the building is. Uh, it's a long-term project. Next on the tour was a stop at the Johannesburg Council Chamber, which was recently completed at a development cost of about 280 million rand. The JPC is now involved in improving the appeal of the areas around the new council chamber to entice passers-by to spend time in a vibrant and safe environment. Phase one, we've, uh, we did a survey. There's over 3,000 people a day use this as a, as a through route. So we thought to activate it by putting down a, a rainbow pathway. And then aligned to that, we wanted to make sure that people stayed here because currently people don't stop for very long. They stop, use some of the free Wi-Fi and then move on down towards the theatre park and then into Bramfontein proper. So we've put outdoor chess in place. We've put a, a big green area, which is behind me. We're putting a big screen TV up on the, on the exterior of the building so we can A, have breakout from the council chamber meetings, but also show football matches or sporting events or, or movies. Uh, we've got a kids play area uh, as part of phase one, plus an outdoor gym. There's outdoor table tennis, a skate park. Uh, we're putting a lot of vegetation in to, to green up the area. We're doing uh, edible plants uh, that could be harvested and uh, sold, I guess, on a Friday uh, in an in a informal market type environment. We've increased the, the lighting quite considerably from a safety perspective to make sure that people feel safe, particularly at night when they walk through here or when it's a little bit darker, uh, early mornings. And then aligned to that, we've also put some charging stations in for cell phones. So that's all really wrapped into phase one, which hopefully will complete middle of July at a total cost of circa 15 million rand. Phase two, I, uh, we're hoping to get activated on, is to actually take all these old pavers that we're standing on now that have been here since inception, uh, rip those up, which then helps us to re-waterproof the, the area. There's 22,300 square meters of paving, so it's quite a considerable uh, amount. And then we're going to put a product called Hydro Media down, which is still porous, which allows the rainwater to drain through to the full bores and then down into the stormwater system. But that'll, that'll stop the tripping hazards that we're currently experiencing with these old pavers and also probably brighten up the, the environment a bit as well. Finally, media got the opportunity to view the iconic Jabulani Amphitheatre, another heritage site, located on the grounds of the award-winning Soweto Theatre. The Amphitheatre was the location where in 1985, Zinzi Mandela famously read her father Nelson Mandela's letter to then South African President P.W. Boerta. What I'm going to do right now here is take you back, way back, back to the time when Zinzi Mandela was standing right at that stage. 
reading the letter that she smuggled from Utata Mandela. Back to the time when this facility was used to do maskandi dance, was used for sports, your boxing, was used for religious activities. In line with the urban design framework and in support of the objectives and the mission of the COJ theatres, the city decided to refurbish this heritage facility. Prior to commencement of works, there was a heritage approval received. So initially, this facility was a 15,000 seater, but now due to the unsafe still seating, which used to form part of the amphitheater, we had to reduce the seating to 3,000. As the city, we had to, to demolish the still seating as per approval from Prague, and the still seating, the still was reused by the local artist to create sculptures. And the sculptures narrates the activities which used to take place within the Jabulani Amphitheater. So we tried as much as we can to reconsider the historic usage of the amphitheater. So what we have done is we've retained most of the brickwork on the city. The center of the arena is going to be compacted ground, which makes it easy for African performers to connect with the earth. And we're also going to have perimeter grass around the compacted ground. We also, initially the amphitheater didn't have seating allowance for people with disability. So in terms of Ohasa, we have made provision for that. And now I can tell you, on completion of this amphitheater, it will be Ohasa compliant. So the other things that we're doing, we're going to widen the stage and then we're going to have a tented stage, stage roof and then we've also constructed the two tunnels which will be used as access and at the back there's going to be rehearsal space change rooms and the delivery yard there's also going to be a bridge over the over the stage area which is going to make it easy for people to walk around the amphitheater there's also going to be landscaping and hardscaping, which is going to make sure that the seamless connection between the amphitheater and the existing developments within the Jabulani cultural precinct. Other news making headlines, freights of components can be tracked and Bearing's power transmission joint moves to 5,000 square meter sites. To help control import costs and combat the volatile rand, Import and Working Capital Specialist Investec Import Solutions Online Client Portal, BlueLink, offers a complete end-to-end -end view of the entire import transaction on one platform from order placement through to delivery. So the paradigm shift is that importing of products is no longer purely about the physical product and it's not about moving goods from point A to point B. The companies that are bringing in those goods need to ensure that the cash flow cycles are positive and there's a financial as well as a physical supply chain. So being able to match these two ensures that these companies are profitable and that they've got a handle on their costs and at the same time understand the timings as to when goods are landing, when they need to make payments and when they're receiving payments back from their customers. As part of its business strategy to re-engineer and optimize global operations, Bearings and Mechanical Power Transmission Solutions Provider Timken has opened a new facility in Gauteng. This particular facility is just under 5,000 square meters. Um, it, it homes our um, rail repair and assembly operations and we, we hold our, our own warehousing product here um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's operations. It's positioned in, uh, in Pomona, the new facility. Um, strategically positioned here from a logistical perspective. Um, we're very close to the airport, we're close to, to main arterial highways and you know from a logistics perspective we find it uh, you know we find it very uh, convenient and um, you know it's, it's, a, it's an area that is that is growing and uh, our image is, is, is growing with it so, so the idea is to, is to be in a good location. That's Krima Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.